Welcome, everyone, to another episode of The DL. I am your host, Tyler Robertson, the CEO and founder of Diesel Laptops. And today, we have a guest all the way back from season one, episode 11, I believe it was. Uh, and we have a lot to catch up on, because when we talked to him last, he had he had one thing going with one platform, one idea, and it's kind of grown from there pretty substantially. And I think he's kind of gone back to his roots a little bit here, too, with buses and EVs and all kinds of things. So with that, I want to welcome John Gilly back on the back on the DL, man. Welcome, welcome back here. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me back, and thank you for setting the pace. You know, uh, yes, we have a lot going on with TTT and Green Island EV, but you know, uh, let's talk about the, the 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 growth and expansion of diesel laptops. I mean, this is amazing. The pace uh, and the standard and uh, that you set for me to to follow you. So. Congrats on that. Yeah, well, you know, thank you. And I'll say, like, I'm I'm amazed at our team here. Like, it, it's unbelievable. Like, we've been growing fast. And then we came right. through January growing, like, over 40% from the previous year, wow. same month. And it's, it's just on yeah. a tear. Traffic keeps going crazy. Like, it, I don't know what we're doing all the time here, but it, it, what we're doing is working. So we're just going to keep doubling down on it. So things are going great over here. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to get you back on here because you you recently had a really big announcement that came out in January and you mentioned it just a second ago, Green yeah. Island EV. Can you just break down everybody? What What is Green Island EV? So um, I, I'll, I, can, I will tell you as much as I can tell you. We have, you know, certain NDAs in place and, and a lot of a lot of moving parts. But uh, Green Island EV uh, will be a, an original equipment manufacturer. We will be a... Uh, uh, manufacturing or really assembling uh, micro transit EVs uh, in Green Island, New York. Uh, if you know where Albany is, uh, Green Island is about eight miles uh, northeast of uh, of Albany, right on the Hudson. I grew up uh, in, the, in the an adjacent community, about a half a mile away from where the factory is going to be in Cohoes, New York. So shout out to my hometown. Um, but what we're going to be doing is uh, is is probably some last mile deliveries. So we're gonna we're gonna stay in our sweet spot of, of trucking, but last mile delivery, but and then going back to public transportation because we think there's a a huge need for EVs that are made in New York for New York by New Yorkers. Right now, uh, we're gonna narrow our focus um, just to the New York market right now. But if you look about, if you think about. New York City moving to 100% EV. If you think about other pockets of New York and the push to go green, um, we think there's a, a, a an enormous opportunity for us to to build our our, our business in in Green Island. Uh, and and what's interesting, Tyler, is that I, I tell people about the brand. Um, let's say folks in California or Texas, wherever they are, and they don't know where Green Island is. They think I've made up the brand as a brand name, and it's actually a place. And, uh, you know, so it's not an original idea, Green Island, it's a real place. It's a real dot on the map, and it's and it just a strategically perfect place to uh, to build our, our EV factory. Well, there's a little bit of history too with Green Island, right? Like, yeah. besides the name Green, like what are the odds? Green, now EV manufacturer, but there's a history here of automotive as well, and yeah. really industrial revolution type stuff. So can you talk a little bit about that whole side of it? I can. So, you know, uh, the, hist the history of the Hudson Valley, um, early, early uh, the Dutch settled the, the Hudson, the Hudson Valley, uh, the Albany area. Albany was called Fort Orange. I mean, it's historically significant uh, American history. And then the because of the, the Hudson and, of course, the Erie Canal that was built uh, from the connecting the, the Great Lakes to the Hudson, really the Hudson River, uh, the, the Erie Canal passed right through my backyard, basically where I grew up. So um, the area has been heavily, heavily uh, industrial. And then like, like most um, factory towns and areas in the Northeast, businesses started to pull out in the 70s and, and 1970s, 1980s. But going back to uh, the origination of, of Green Island and really the, the, the property where we're building and right behind me on my profile, uh, shameless plug uh, for Green Island, that is the old Ford factory uh, you would think is a, a campus, the Ford factory. Uh, Henry Ford ended up uh, buying a, a good chunk of uh, Green Island, uh, really for sport. He and his best buddy, Thomas Edison, um, uh, would hunt and fish there with 
and camp out uh, and for vacation, just for some time away with their friends, Harvey Firestone and the environmentalist William Burroughs. So it goes back to the really the early 1900s. And then um, eventually uh, Thomas Edison, if you look close on the, on, on the pick here, uh, you'll see a hydroelectric uh, facility, which is today Green Island Power Authority. But that was that factory, that hydroelectric plant, which takes uh, energy from the Hudson River um, and converts it into electricity, uh, that was built by Thomas Edison. And then uh, his buddy Henry Ford says, hey, well, since you have the hydroelectric uh, factory or converting and making energy, I'm going to build my, my factory, a Ford factory here. And uh, they did a 100 year anniversary this year. So in 1922, Henry Ford built a factory and there they made radiators and different parts that uh, was, were eventually manufactured at the factory, but employed up to a, about a thousand people at its peak. And they would they would um, rail from on rail rail bed uh, from Green Island to back to Dearborn for the the finished product back at Dearborn. So you know they closed um, they closed up shop. You know a lot of the big businesses, General Electric, Ford, they were all pulling out, uh, thinking of you know downsizing in the, in the 1970s and 1980s. And by 1985 ish, uh, the Ford factory was completely shut down. And that factory uh, location has been in Brownfield uh, for you know almost 35 years. So it's our way of of bringing you know high quality jobs, manufacturing jobs, back to my hometown, back to my hometown area. Well, I went to school in Rochester, New York, at RIT, but then they kicked me out two years later because I got bad grades and never went to class. But uh, so beautiful area. I love the love the upstate area of of New York. And um, it's also always amazing, too, when you read history to figure out, like, Firestone family was talking to Thomas Edison. Like, all those people kind of knew each other. They were all in that revolutionary-type era. Um, but I want to go back to kind of what you talked about, like, it was the products. And you used a term there that I'm not entirely familiar with because I'm not a bus guy. I'm a, I'm a, tr- a heavy-duty truck guy. Uh, you right. use the word microtransit. Can you kind of yeah. unpack that a little bit for everybody? Like, what, what exactly are you making here? So, so uh, again, our bet is that uh, we're 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 moving to smaller, right, more efficient vehicles. Um, it, it, I don't have to tell you about the move to EV, um, and it's all commercial. So I'm going to be very. We're not going to build electric cars here. We're building micro transit. Small. You would think of uh, Tyler on the Ford 450 chassis or the Ford 350, um, and you think about the the Type A school bus. You think about uh, a, 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 a Ford 450 type of transit bus. Think about last mile delivery, either for UPS, for uh, FedEx, or you know other delivery, Prime, Amazon, that are now in every single neighborhood, every minute of the day. I, I live in Manhattan now, and, and I will tell you, it's just amazing seeing the delivery services here play out. And I think there's going to be um, a, a, a push, a movement to uh, more efficient, smaller scale units uh, that are electric um, now, but then there's a gravitational pull tool towards autonomous electric, perhaps not in my lifetime or in this next decade, but certainly 20 years out, you're going to see a lot of autonomous electric, um, smaller platform vehicles uh, on the roads. Well, you know, I want to say I think you're right, because I just happened to have someone in my office uh, not too long ago. And they work at not a company that is billion, but like billions of years of dollars of revenue each year. And yeah. he was telling me they have this division of their company that basically they sit around and think about what the future is going to look like three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, because that's where they start to do their strategic planning. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I didn't know companies did that. But obviously they do that. And they said the exact same thing. They say, as we look down the future, it's going to be a lot of that delivery type service, delivering things all over the place, just really quick. Um, yeah. and they just have specific things or a bunch of things. So they, very similar thoughts on, on the whole process. So, um, that aside, you know, the part that intrigues me here is launching a manufacturing operation is no small yeah. feat. I mean, it's capital yeah. raise, it's finding leadership, it's getting yeah. the, the, the building, the property, the land, the political side, you need to get the, the, te- you know, all those things that need to happen to get permission to do things. Um, especially yeah. in, in states like California, New York, it yeah. seems like there's a lot more red tape than, you know, South Carolina, where it's just kind of go. So, I mean, it was about a month ago. I saw the article in January. 
um, two months ago, whatever that was. How how are things going so far at this point? It's going it's it's going extremely well. And and you listen, you you called it spot on, Tyler. It's all about the team, right? Uh, you know, uh, I think I've shared with you our methodology of building trucktractortrailer.com. We have a four pillar project management framework and methodology that we follow, and we're going to take that that same project management leadership uh, um, over to Green Island DV when we're, when, we're, when we're launching Green Island. Pillar one is always, for me, people. Um, and if you have the right talent, the right people, the right stakeholders, the right uh, uh, vendors, the right suppliers um, on the team, you can solve any problem, you can build any product, you can launch and execute uh, anything. But it all starts with people. And and I took our time, much like with TTT, we took our time finding the right mix of people for Green Island. Um, certainly, we have great community support from the village of Green Island with Mayor Ellen McNulty uh, and Sean Ward and Maggie Alex. Uh, at, the, at the village level, they are 100% behind bringing great jobs back to Green Island and, and the Cohoes area. Um, we have, you know, great, uh, you know, the, the governor of New York is a uh, big, big fan of uh, uh, clean energy jobs. Uh, Congressman Paul Tonko is very supportive. Uh, assembly person John McDonald uh, is uh, from the art area is 100% backed backing what we're doing in Green Island. And, and so from a, uh, I guess a uh, political community support, we have 100% buy-in from the local community and you need that to pull things off. And then you have to have your operating team and um, you know, and we have a very strong uh, core group. I can't mention all of them because some of them have day jobs, um, and we're waiting for the right funding to come in. Uh, the other, the other really important um, barrier that I need to plow through uh, and overcome was um, uh, finding a developer to actually uh, work with and to uh, take over a big project like this because this property, the Ford property has been in Brownfield. So it's been an environmental uh, challenge to, to overcome and, and to rebuild there. So I had to go with somebody that had deep experience um, with taking Brownfield locations like this Ford property and converting it to something that is useful and contemporary and modern. Because what we're gonna build here, Tyler, is going to be, uh, we, we believe on scale with what Tesla is building, but it's gonna be in up, upstate New York. So it's gonna be a showcase. Our partner on the development side, the design and development, is Louisi. Um, they're out of Watervliet, New York, uh, which is adjacent to Green Island. Um, strong roots in Troy, New York. Strong roots in in the uh, the Capital District. Uh, Chuck Pafundi is our project leader. Uh, he's been on point. He takes ten of my calls a day. He calls me back. A great young uh, professional, visionary, um, and and working together with Chuck and. Um, Peter Luizzi and his team, we were able to come up with this concept that I shared with you this morning, this beautiful and uh, beautiful layout, uh, very contemporary, modern factory campus like um, that's going to be the showcase for the area. But you're right. Uh, you can't go alone. You have to go with, you know, it's, it takes a village like the village of Green Island, but it takes it takes an entire team to pull this off. And um, I'm pretty pleased with the direction. Well, I personally, I think it's a great idea. And I, I know you got the strategy behind it. I mean, you just look at the, the EV push. It's coming. Government's obviously going to subsidize and, and encourage people to buy these things. Right. They're going to do taxes, re rebates and whatnot. Um, you look at New York City, obviously a huge metro area that wants to go green and have EVs. So you, you got a lot of things going in your direction. But I, I think people also not need to understand this isn't like a snap your finger and you're making vehicles tomorrow. This is going to take oh. a little bit of time to put together. Is there a, a rough timeline in your mind of, of when you think things will get going here? Yeah. So, I, again, we're, we're going to you got uh, a lot of things that play a lot of uh, priorities to juggle. We're probably, you know, 36 months out from shipping and delivering anything. Right. Um, and, 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 and we're going to have strategic investors that are going to be patient. Uh, uh, we're going to have, you know, you know, investors and stakeholders that are, are behind us on the safety issues and, and, and really put a quality uh, unit on the street. We want to get this right the first time. We don't have a gun to our head. We have no uh, ambition to go public or be backed by a SPAC. We're not going to have those kind of pressures. You know, we're going to 
we're, we're going to go slow to go fast, Tyler, and we're going to take our time and do it right. We've taken our time to this point. And, um, and we have, and, and I think that if you look at my, you know, my background, uh, I have a deep experience in, in EVs, um, you know, um, maybe not on the product development, but I, I'm, I'm now recruiting uh, and sourcing world-class talent that is from New York to come back home, basically, that are either from Rochester Institute of Technology like yourself or RPI, Clarkston, Cornell, Union, uh, the State University of New York system. So there's a lot of talent uh, that was we grew up in grew up in New York, educated in New York, went elsewhere to Palo Alto, maybe we went to Tesla, uh, to other EV startups that want to come home to help us build incredible uh, Green Island EVs. Yeah, and I think that's the 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 missing point I didn't get to, but you, you kind of mentioned it there is you you know buses like you've you've been in that industry and, and oh, yeah. been there kind yeah. of done that before, yeah. and I I do love your strategy as well. It's really a diesel laptop strategy. Like, let's just keep growing, going at our pace, doing our thing here. And, you know, we don't need all those outside investors. In our case, right, we just go organic. A lot different when you're trying to scale up an entire manufacturing and distribution um, yeah. arm. I mean, that's the whole other part of it. These things are going to be all over the place. Have you started thinking about distribution, how you're going to support these things and, and yeah. that side of it? Yeah. So, uh, you know, so I, I think when, if you follow the EV sector, uh, I, you know, I do. Um, and I, I'm sure you do as well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of these um, EV companies are are founded with product geniuses, right? Electrical engineers that have a great idea, a science project uh, at, uh, at a, co a college that has, they're taking the scale now. And I think a lot of it, uh, a lot of the challenges that companies have, these EV companies, they don't understand how to sell and distribute and service. Um, so we're kind of reverse engineering. That's my experience that I, I've had experience in building you know, an EV company, bringing an EV company here into the United States. Um, it, uh, I'm on the Empire Clean City Coalition board here in New York City. So I'm, I'm exposed to uh, not just what's happening here in the, in the five boroughs, uh, but nationally. Uh, you, you know, right now we're TTT, we're helping the state of California figure out how to uh, help small fleets and owner operators navigate uh, the EV, uh, trans the transformation to EV. Uh, and we've been retained for a number of months on this project and we'll be retained for a long time to help to solve the problem in in California. And then we're going to help solve the problem for small fleets and owner operators uh, in New York and probably right down the I-95. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's since you mentioned TTT here, let's just go back in time. I mean, that you were here a couple of years ago, season yeah. one. You were actually in my studio like we, we met and everything. It was great yeah. to meet you in person. Um, how, how's it going with truck tractor trailer.com? How are, how are things progressing there? It, it's going great. Uh, you know, I, I think, um, knock on, knock on wood. I, I think February will be the first month we've actually turned a profit, uh, which is extraordinary because, you know, we are, um, you know, for us, it's about being self-funded, right? So you're not having to, you know, sell shares at uh, at 10 when you when you're hope to one day sell shares in your company at at 150 right yeah. so to be self-funded at this point in our life cycle for a you know a pure SaaS, 100 percent remote virtual platform i think it's pretty remarkable uh and and that's a testament to the team that we've built and 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 how well they work together uh on the technology but also uh working closely with sellers and buyers uh, you know, the challenge with TTT is uh, because we're a two sided marketplace, right? We're, we're not at really a listing site. We're not at really an advertising site uh, like, let's say, a truck paper. Um, you know, we're a transaction site. Um, so we kind of we kind of took on a big project here. It's the toughest thing to pull off. If you study online platforms, the toughest problem to solve, the toughest solution to take to market and, and make profitable is a two sided marketplace. Again, if you look at um, our team, Sandy Maliti is our chief creative officer. Uh, you, you know, Juliet Mazza came on as our chief marketing officer. We have Marty Lelugas, who just joined as our chief operating officer. Marty spent 14 years at Ritchie Brothers, uh, was on the fast track there, uh, you know, rising star. And he's going to be a rising star with TTT. In fact, he's a star already. We have uh, a new chief product officer, uh, Andy uh, Clevenger. Uh, if you look at Andy's background, um, he you know started at Volvo, 
uh, spend time at Kamatsu, understands heavy equipment, product development, actually making things. And then the, the second part of his career, he spent uh, with online platforms, um, developing Iron Direct, working with liquidity services. So putting really for me, putting Marty and Andy together at this juncture helps us go really, really fast. We have Alan uh, Ignacio and we have Zach Miller. Uh, Alan's heading up the sales um, and marketing. Uh, Heather Balma heads up our platform. And this core team has been together for a long time. Um, and, and Zach Miller, I think, Tyler, not to compete with your DL uh, podcast, we have our own in-house media group. Uh, and you inspired that, right? Um, other people were doing it, but really you gave me the courage to, to go out there and be bold and recruit Zach Miller, an expert. Zach had uh, New York Truck Stop Radio. Uh, and basically we took that model and we morphed it into Stream, which is streaming with three Ts. Uh, and also Zach is gonna be uh, building out the media for Green Island EV. The other part, Tyler, that I you asked me earlier about Green Island in sales and distribution, um, much like what Tesla has done, right? A lot of people think uh, Elon Musk was a genius with building the units. Really where I think he was a genius it is, is, is in marketing. Yeah. Um, you know, you would have to go to tesla.com to, to actually shop and buy a Tesla. There was no physical dealerships. We're going to take a page out of Tesla. Not that I'm Elon Musk, I'm far from it. But we're get, we've, uh, TTT has a DBA um, and we're going to be the registered dealer for Green Island, the OEM in New York. So TTT will be doing business as greenislandev.com. And that will be a TTT managed um, uh, digital dealership. And, uh, and we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I feel like we're both like these entrepreneur people with these ideas. And, you know, you start to get ideas and then you start asking yourself, well, why isn't this happening or why doesn't that happen? And that's yeah. I think what a lot of people realize. And the other part I kind of want to pack there is it's not just build something and you immediately start turning profit and making money. Things oh. take time. And yeah. I, I totally get you on the marketplace side. Um, I remember reading stories about Reddit, how when Reddit first started, nobody's posting. You need readers, you need posters and people creating content. And it's yeah. really it's really tough to get those things going. Um, I know I can say we're struggling. Uh, it's funny, like we're, we're building this whole platform to sell truck parts. I have diagnostic yeah. tools, repair information, tells you the part. Great. I got a whole bunch of buyers and yeah. it's like pulling teeth to find sellers. Because they're like, well, we don't know, we're not sure, all these things. And you're like, man, like, this is the way the world's changing and going. So it's like dragging people through the mud sometimes, getting them to understand. Well, um, Tyler, to that point, I, I think it's, and, and again, for us, you and I, um, we have flexibility and I think some level of courage and ambition to do things that other people aren't doing. Um, you know, I, I think it's for us at TTT, and I look at what you're doing with truck parts, because I follow your story, obviously. Um, is it's like almost like a COVID refresh or a reboot. Uh, and some people got it, some people didn't, but I'm telling you right now, if you don't, I don't have to sell to you, you're, 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 you're a deep believer in this. Everything digital is now cheap, right? Yeah. Uh, everything on the ground uh, is expensive. And in a, I think these online platforms, whether you're selling truck parts or trying to get people to you know, buy and sell, you know, used, you know, 85 or $150,000 used trucks, I think it's advanced by 10 years dur during the COVID and not everyone got it. And I, and I have a message. I, I, it's not even my message. You can look at the experts um, that I follow and you follow. If, if you're not part of this digital revolution, you're not going to be in business. I, I don't think, I, or your business is going to change radically because COVID has reset um, the playing field. And, and, and if you look at just the way people are buying and selling today, uh, even at home, right? Uh, you know, I know personally from our family, we buy a whole more, we buy, we buy a lot more online today than we did five years ago. Uh, and I think COVID really accelerated things. And I, so I think keep at it. I, I think your, your truck parts online is going to be a huge home run. Um, but I also want to talk to you today about our joint venture, which we haven't really uh, figured out yet but is evlaptops.com. Because I think if you look at the future of EV, a lot of it, a lot of your maintenance and preventive maintenance is gonna be done remotely and diagnostically. And I can't do it without you. 
Yeah. So, I mean, a couple of things on that. Like I constantly get asked by people, your diesel laptops, EVs coming, what are you going to do? And my yeah. response has been similar to what you said. Like, this is the great reset. I was, <laughs> I, I was 20 years late to the diesel game and caught up quick. Now all my competitors in our space, they get to deal with me on day one of a new thing that is in the marketplace. So best of luck to all of us here. It, it, it's a race. Um, and, I, and I totally agree. I, 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 think there's, I think there's room and space there. So like you mentioned remote diagnostics, we 100% believe that is the future of trucks is data coming off them as they're driving down the road and call centers are monitoring data and machine yeah. learning and AI is figuring out before you even have a problem and figuring out where the part is and where you should go. Like yeah. that solves so many problems. So we just launched a versatile diesel technician service. So currently oh. our customers that buy kits, they can buy, they get that anyway. But now we said, you know what? Anybody anywhere that has any tool or even no tools, they can pay a monthly fee, have access to our remote diesel techs. We'll, we'll give yeah. them free software. They can chat with us. They can call us and we'll walk them through problems. So we are 100% agreeing with you. That is that is where the industry is going. And you you already took my domain name. You already took my domain name off up from me. Someone's gonna steal it. So I told <laughs> I told you. I said Tyler, if you don't do this today, I'm doing it because if not, someone else is gonna do it. So I did it. You're my I, you're I, my domain squatter. I got to deal with just like some of these other guys out there. No, I'm not that guy. I, 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 listen, I'm just I, kidding. I did it for I did it for our joint venture. Yeah. And and I and I. And, and let's go back to diesel laptops for a second, because I'm I'm very fortunate to sit at the this cross section of the old world and the new world, right? Um, and, and it's a fortunate position to be in. Um, I don't see diesel going away anytime <laughs> soon, right? Uh, Louis Pugh from uh, Oida and I were just on a we're doing a, a, a series of podcasts together, uh, Louis and I with Zach Miller talking about this very issue. And it's a hot topic with owner operators and small fleets. And, you know, if the government doesn't buy them a, 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 a new EV, they can't afford a, a $400,000 or $500,000 electric uh, tractor yep. uh, to pull their trailer. Uh, and certainly there's range anxiety. So from my seat, I think there's going to be diesel is going to be around, especially clean diesel. It's going to be around for decades. This is not a an immediate uh transformation to EV. Uh, let, let's be clear on that. The grid can handle it, yeah. right? The grid can ha can barely handle what it has right now and less than 1% of commercial vehicles are electric, right? Um, and, and so if the, the big power companies, the big electric, electrical companies, let's say Con Edison and National Grid in the Northeast, down South, Florida Power and Light or Duke Energy, if they're having a tough time meeting current demand uh, that's brought on by Tesla, and other EV uh, consumer auto. Uh, imagine when we start converting commercial to EV. So we're decades away from mass transformation. Uh, yeah, we we agree as well. I mean, especially you look at the off highway diesel world with earth moving equipment and everything else. That's a, a whole nother thing that that needs to get dealt with in farm tractors and, and all these things. Well, well on that, I, I will tell you, it's interesting. And again, I can't reveal all my sources, but um, I'm in a couple of different think tanks on EV. John Deere is going EV. Yeah. So you think John Deere and you got the diesel tractor and farm, you know, farm and McDonald or, uh, you know, riding a diesel tractor, they're going to be autonomous electric before you know it. And, yep. and an old McDonald is going to be on his porch with like a, a little uh, remote diagnostics, you know, watching the, the autonomous electric tractors plow the fields. So uh, I I've seen it. It's I happening. I remember being at Disney World as a kid, right? Like in the in the 80s. And there was like some future thing. And it was like computer, you know, farm tractors, all computerized and doing stuff. Yes. I'm like, man, that'd be cool one day. And, you know, we're, we're almost there. So it, it's Points pretty cool. There, to, it's pretty cool to see that stuff. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's just a, it's just an interesting, an interesting time to be alive. I mean, just yesterday, I don't know if you, you saw this, I know you've been traveling and doing things, but yeah. just yesterday, Cummins announced they're buying Wab, uh, buying Meritor. And yeah. and you, what everyone needs to realize is that's an EV play because Meritor is making the drive axles, the electric components that, that propel those commercial trucks. And Cummins obviously makes the engines and they're saying yeah. we need to be in this game. And they just put almost four billion dollars into it. So. I think we're going to see more and more of these bigger companies uh, defending their turf and trying to figure out how to play in the, the shifting landscape. It, it's uh, so I call that the disintermediation of the value chain, right? We're going to see 
Uh, and I think you look back at 2021 and 2020, because of COVID, you had a lot of M&A, a lot of mergers and acquisitions and, 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 and you know, a lot, a lot of IPOs. I, I think what we're going to see going forward is even rapid consolidation of the value chain. So Cummins buying Meter uh, was, was not surprising to me. Uh, obviously, I work closely. I follow the Cummins group uh, very closely. I know they're in UV. Uh, it's a big investment for them. Um, but I, I think that's just the start of it. Uh, you know, uh, on the consumer auto, look at Ford Motor. You know, uh, they were kind of late to the game. Uh, Tesla really forced their hands. And now they're all in on EV. Um, and then you have the big OEMs like Daimler. Um, you're, and they're a driving force um, with, with EV now. And, and now that they've woken up, you know, Daimler has 40% of the worldwide market. Uh, they're not about to lose a single point of market share, right? If they know that the market's going EV, they're going to be in this in a very big way. Um, so I think, I think the Cummins announcement yesterday was just uh, yet a continued um, news announcement. And, and, and joint ventures like, you know, uh, diesel laptops in Green Island or TTT doing evlaptops.com is, is just, uh, it's academic at this point. It has to happen. Yeah, it's the evolution of business. I think every business owner, if they're listening to this, just look in the future. What's coming? Be ready for it. I'm yeah. uh, I actually got invited to Navistar's e mobility center up in Michigan, so I'm going up there next month to go to go check that out. So it, yeah. it's just it's just exciting times all around. New products, new everything, and it's been great catching up with you. I, I do. Do we catch? Do we hit everything that we wanted to talk about no, here? No, no, no. I, I think we we didn't even do the top three. <laughs> we could probably do this for all day long and keep talking about things. Uh, but we do got to call it an episode. So, John, if people want to get a hold of you, learn more about Green Island UV or Truck Tractor Trailer or Stream, like where 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 should they go? Throw some LinkedIn. websites or Just, yeah. LinkedIn is my hub. LinkedIn, John, you know, you can find me on LinkedIn. Just Google Truck Tractor Trailer. Or just link, you know, search on LinkedIn Truck Tractor Trailer or Green Island EV. You'll find me. Uh, send me a note. Happy to connect. And. Um, I think that's the hub or you can you can find me on trucktractortrailer.com or on greenislandev.com and I'll get back to you. Well, I think you're the guy that broke LinkedIn with so many connections. It feels like every time I every time someone's connected to me it's like this person's connected to John to John. I'm like, "Oh, wow." Like you're you're definitely out there and it's been great having you on. Great learning everything, catching up again. I think we're well overdue for a follow-up episode. Uh, so this is this has really been great. So with that everyone, we're going to call this an episode. Uh, as we end every episode, it's just not diagnostics, it's diagnostics done right, but part of that is the EV world. Part of that's the entrepreneurship world, all these other things that are going on out there. So I wanna thank everyone, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you, like, subscribe, follow us, comments, all that stuff helps. Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, everywhere we are. So we'll call it, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, we'll catch you on the next one.